Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the podcast here on this Saturday, April 2nd, 2022. I'm your host, Shahir Henderson, and we are here to have a very important conversation today. Make sure you guys share this podcast and make sure you guys share this video. This is a very important conversation we're having today, and it needs to be reached to the masses or hit the ears of many different people out there who may be going through something similar to what I'm about to share with you guys this morning. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. On November 1st, 2019, Anitra Gunn breaks up with Demarcus Little. Demarcus Little does not like the fact that Anitra Gunn ends their relationship as she explains to him, she has become exhausted by the relationship. The two had been in a relationship for a couple of months, which really angered Demarcus because he really had lots of feelings for Anitra. He went on to explain that Anitra Gunn was his soulmate. Fast forward to February 5th. We're going to start early. On February 5th, Anitra Gunn is accompanying a new guy that she's dealing with. Of course, Demarcus does not like this, and he comes to her house. As Anitra and this gentleman are asleep in a bed, they hear a loud boom inside the house. So the gentleman gets up. As Anitra explains, she does not have anyone that's stalking her, or she does not have any trouble that she knows about, you know, coming her way. So as she walks out of the room, excuse me, she goes to investigate what happened. So as she goes to investigate what happened, this gentleman decides that he's going to go ahead and leave. The gentleman's name is Scoop. He makes the decision that he's going to go ahead and leave. And as he's leaving, he notices that there's glass on the floor. And once he walks outside, he sees that Anitra's tires have been slashed. So he asks Anitra, hey, do you have any issues with anybody? You know, is there somebody, you know, that's, that's messing with you? And she says, no, not that she can think of. So what Anitra does is she contacts DeMarcus Little. Upon contacting DeMarcus Little, she shows him pictures of a broken window and shows him <clears throat> uh, pictures of her slashed tires and asks him, has he been anywhere near her house in the last few hours or, you know, any time that morning? The Marcus Little goes on to tell Anitra, no, I was not at your house. <clears throat> Excuse me, that was not me. And he shares his location. He takes a screenshot of his location to show her where he was actually at at the time that she mentioned um, this, these things had happened. However, he eventually confessed to actually breaking a window and slashing Anitra, Anitra's tires. So, bizarre story, bizarre case. Anitra goes on and tells him she's not going to file a complaint against him. She's not going to... Uh, press charges against him for what he's done. Fast forward to February 12th, there's another incident. And DeMarcus is at it again. He's threatening her. He's telling her that she shouldn't be dating the gentleman that she's dating. He threatens to kill the gentleman, shoot the gentleman up, as he, as he said, in text messages. And do other things if she did not leave this guy alone. We're going to fast forward to February 13th. The night of February 13th, Anitra, Demarcus, and a couple of their friends go out to a party. After the party, Demarcus and Anitra are dropped off at Demarcus's aunt's house. They get in Anitra Gunn's car and they go to her house. But then they go back to Demarcus's aunt's house. And Anitra decides that she's going to spend the night with Demarcus. They're seen by Demarcus's aunt as they go into 
the bedroom. Inside the bedroom, the how you want to say the the actual conversation is not known, but Demarcus's friend Javon explained what Demarcus had told him. What happened inside the bedroom? So they're inside the bedroom, and Demarcus goes on to explain to Anitra how he feels and how he wants to be with her, and he devotes and devours his love, and he's basically giving her his all right there in the bedroom. However, Anitra does not want to be with Demarcus. She explains this to him and tells him she does not want to be with him. Mark, Demarcus goes on to tell his homeboy that he blacked out. He starts choking Anitra, and as he's choking her, she begins to fight back. As she's fighting back, he continues to choke her, and then he tells his friend she eventually gave up as he believed she wanted to go ahead and be with her mother. Anitra Gunn's mother died at a young age, so Demarcus takes it upon himself to believe that she has just given up life so that she can go be with mom. Now, Demarcus is freaking out. He's just killed Anitra and he doesn't know what to do. So he drags her body outside and puts it into the back of her car. He takes her car and he drives it off into uh, a road uh, off some mile, some couple of miles away from her house. He drops the car off and then he calls his homeboy, Javon. He has Javon come and pick him up. And as he, Javon picks him up, he starts to explain what happened. He starts to tell Javon about how Anitra and he was in his aunt's house and he started to profess his love to her and she laughed at him. That made him angry and he choked her until she was no longer breathing. He explained to Javon that Javon needed to help him with the body as they brought the body deeper into the woods. So they drive back to Nitra Gunn's car. He takes her body out of the car and takes it into a back of the woods on Greer Road. I'm going to share that video with you guys of Anitra being found right now. Behind the crime scene tape in the woods, not far from where I'm standing, is where investigators say they found the body of Anitra Gunn yesterday. What is now a quiet road here on Greer Road wasn't this morning. It was filled with Crawford County deputies, GBI officials, and other investigators. In fact, their crime scene unit was leaving as I pulled up to the scene. Investigators formed a grid in this area to gather evidence left from yesterday's search. Crawford County Sheriff Lewis Walker tells me as of now, they have no suspect in this case, but they do have a person of interest, Gunn's boyfriend. So we came back out this morning, uh, did some grid searches and some continue to, to work the scene out here to, to, to continue to look for any evidence that may uh, that was left that we couldn't see last night. Sheriff Walker tells me they won't give up until they have answers for Gunn's family. Never ever seen a Nietzsche um, with an enemy. I never ever seen someone say they had a problem with me or me made them upset. She when she come around, she lit, she made everybody. Change. Today, while out surveying the scene, the sheriff tells me they also found new evidence, although they can't tell me what. GBI officials tell me they will be performing an autopsy tomorrow to determine the cause of death. For now, in Crawford County, I'm Tiffany Thompson. All right. Welcome back, guys. So, as you saw in the video, they found Anitra's body off Greer Road there in... Uh, there in Georgia. So apologize that I had to jump this so far so far ahead in the story. But this story escalated very quickly, just like the situation escalated very quickly in the house that morning on Valentine's Day, February 14th. It was a Friday, 2020. So now 
Demarcus has hid the body. After he hides her body and has Javon drive him back to his aunt's house, later on in that morning, he starts to message the guy's school. He starts to try and convince the guy to come outside and meet up with him, but he's pretending to be a Nitra. He's having a back and forth conversation about the gentleman and having the gen wanting the gentleman to lure to lure the gentleman outside so that I'm pretty sure so that he can kill him. So he goes on to explain to the gentleman that. He has his cell phone. Now, I didn't mention this, but the guy Scoop, when he was over at Anitra's home, his cell phone disappeared. And he was trying to get his cell phone back from Anitra. So she was telling him she has, well, Demarcus was telling him that he has the cell phone and that he wants to come to his house and bring it to him. Now, remind you, Anitra never wanted to come to Scoot's house. She told him that if they were to see each other, that she would come to his house. There was no reason for her to go to Scoot's house because they live right down the street from each other. So she can have him come to her house and there was no need for her to go to his house. So Scoot automatically knew that something was wrong because She's saying that she wants to come to his house. Many other messages are given or received by Scoot from the number, along with a message that says, I can no longer F with you no more. So she's moving on. He found that to be very weird as he and Anitra were never in a relationship. They never even dealt with each other that serious. They were only dealing with each other for about a good week from the 5th to the 12th or to the time that she was killed, that's about the time that they dealt with each other. There was never nothing serious going on there. They only saw each other a few times, Scoop mentioned in his, uh, in his confession in court. There was not many times that they saw each other. So how is there a relationship? So this guy automatically knows something is wrong. He started receiving these messages, I believe it was about 10 a.m. on Valentine's Day. As also, he received a message that said, Happy Valentine's Day. He reciprocated with a Happy Valentine's Day, and he started cutting hair outside. We know 2020 was a very bad year, and most people started to take their business outdoors. So as he's cutting hair outside, he notices a black car keeps riding by his house. And as the black car is riding by his house, DeMarcus Little is consistently trying to get him to tell him who he is. He even goes on to tell Scoot to explain to him how does he look. Now, if this is Anitra, she already knows how Scoot looks. So why does he need to tell him how he looks if that's Anitra, who already knows how he looks? Apart with Texan Scoot, Demarcus, Texas, Anitra's best friend by the name of Sierra. He's <clears throat> telling Sierra that he's with, she, that he, she is with Demarcus, who she calls D. And she also was with another guy that she dealt with, basically trying to have a conversation with her homegirl as, as though it's her. And her homegirl reciprocates and tells her she's happy for her and that she doesn't also doesn't understand why she continues to mess with DeMarcus. After DeMarcus has slashed her tires, bust out her windows, threatened her life, threatened to shoot up Scoop and many other different things. So she tells her, you know, he could probably kill a damn cat or something like that and you'll still deal with him. So she said bye as the message angered her and let her go. Little did she know she was not texting Anitra. She was texting the markets. February 16th, 
By now, Anitra has been missing for two days. Her father re uh, reaches out to different people. There's different posts on um, online that are sharing their concerns and sharing their worries and telling people reach out to the Fort Valley, Fort, Fort Valley Police if they were to find Anitra. Family members are posting things online, trying to figure out where their family member is at. All the while, DeMarcus Little goes to a pawn shop, purchases a gun, and is still doing a lot of strange and bizarre things to trying to cover up Anitra's murder. On February 19th, 2020, as you saw in that video, that video I just shared with you earlier was from February 19th, 2020. Anitra Gunn's body was discovered by a sheriff's deputy off in the woods off Greer Road. DeMarcus had covered her body with some sticks and just left her there like she was trash. Took her vehicle and parked it off on a road somewhere. The reason why her bumper, as you guys see in the picture, is destroyed is because DeMarcus drove her vehicle deeper into the woods so that no one would be able to find the vehicle or no one could see the vehicle off the road. As he drove deeper into the woods, he hit a tree and knocked her bumper off along with a, um, a side light on the side of the car. February 19th, Anitra's body is found. Investigators, as you see, say they still don't have a lead, but they do have a person of interest. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Anytime a story takes place like this, the boyfriend or the husband is automatically the person of interest. They, know, they do not know about these instances that took place on February 5th and February 12th because Anitra did not file a report about these different things that took place. She just spoke to DeMarcus herself. Once she found out he did it, told him he shouldn't do that again and to stay away from her. She also, um, on February 12th, um, I, I didn't mention this, they were at his aunt's house and DeMarcus made a few advancements at her and she told him not to touch her. She said for him not to touch her and she didn't want to go into that type of relationship with him any further. I'm, I'm believing she just wanted to remain friends, hang out, and kick it with him. <clears throat> she didn't want to get intimate. So once again, this angers the Marcus, and he takes it upon himself to do more property damage and do more psychological damage and emotional damage as well. So Anitra's found there. <clears throat> Some days later, DeMarcus is brought in as the person of interest, and they find him to be the person who actually done everything that was done to Anitra as they did their investigations and found many other different things. So what did they find? They did an investigation and pulled up the text messages. The text messages were the major lead in this case. They found um, items of Anitra's and DeMarcus's vehicle. They also got the confession from DeMarcus's friend and we go fast forward to today, about three weeks ago, the case took place. Three weeks ago, Ciara takes the stand, Scoot takes the stand, DeMarcus's aunt takes the stand, and then DeMarcus himself takes the stand. They build a great case up against DeMarcus. Great facts, great actions by the prosecuting team, great actions by the DA. To come together and figure out how DeMarcus orchestrated a murder and then tried to murder Scoot and convince 
her uh, and convince Sierra, her best friend, to no longer deal with her and just cause this tragedy to become even more toxic. He went on to try to cover up the murder and say that he was not guilty that that morning on February 14th, Anitra Gunn went to an interview. Wig, eyelashes, and everything in tow. However, when she was found, she had none of that. So he couldn't explain, excuse me, guys, he couldn't explain how, when, and why Anitra ended up in the state that she was. He could not explain this. But they already had the evidence they needed to convict him. So to end this story on a very great note, with the sad passing of Anitra Dunn, may she rest in peace. And the strong, straightforward justice brought to DeMarcus Little as he received a guilty plea and life without the possibility of parole. He was facing murder malice, but they dropped that and gave him life without the possibility of parole. All of this because someone did not want to love you the way you love them. Now to my closing arguments, as I do with each of these stories. Right now, you see seeing the National Abuse Hotline phone number on the screen. Next to that, you see the National Suicide Hotline on your screen. I'm going to keep these up as I make my closing statements. If you know you no longer want to be with anyone, if you've came to a point where the relationship has exhausted itself, and you're no longer interested in the person that you're in a relationship with, find a safe place to express your exhaustion, we're going to call it. Find a safe place to explain that you're no longer in love, that you no longer have the feelings that they have, that your love has went from romantic to agape. Explain this to the person without anger and without belittling them. I know I shouldn't be telling you guys how to break up with people. Who am I to tell you how to break up with somebody? Who am I to tell you how to feel? Who am I? to tell you how to use your emotions. Well, I'm a person that does not want to see the next Anitra done. I'm a person telling the next DeMarcus Little that if you have issues with anger, you need to seek counseling. Guys, if you ever break up with someone and they in turn tell you I'm going to kill myself or I will kill myself because of you leaving me. Reach out to the National Suicide Helpline and let them know what you were just told. Speak to the person. Ask them if they have anything in mind or do do they have a plan? Or are they preparing to hurt themselves right now? If they say yes or if they tell you they are, reach out to 911. Give 911 their location and let them know the person just told you they're going to kill themselves. If the person tells you this is going to be some days or so, if, if you're not going to 
go back with them or they give you a deadline, reach out to the National Suicide Helpline, give them the person's information, explain to them you have given their information to them, and they may want to have a conversation with someone in the National Suicide Helpline. They have uh, people who will speak with you, grief counselors who would speak with you in your moment of depression or in your moment of anger in which you've been broken up with. So guys, you want to break up with someone in a safe place. If you're home and you break up with the person, the fear that a person that is violent will come retaliate against you is going to be immense. So what you want to do is reach out to the local police department. Don't call 911. Call the police department itself. You may get a dispatcher. Explain to the dispatcher your concerns as you just broken up with this person. Tell them you fear that this person may retaliate due to this breakup. And can they increase the patrols in your neighborhood? If you really feel as though your life is in danger, guys, reach out to a family member you feel comfortable with and go stay with them for a while. Don't reach out to the person who you broke up with. Don't hang out with them. Don't go to the Waffle House. And I'm not, not blaming Anitra, and I'm not saying it's her fault at all. Please do not confuse this. But if you've broken up with someone and you've ended things with them, do not drag them along. Do not pretend or act as though you're still in a relationship with them. And do things as though you're in a relationship. Like spending the night at their house or being at their house past a certain time period. I would say 11 o'clock is a decent time to take your behind home if you're not in a relationship with this person. Or don't hang out with them again, as I just mentioned. When you X someone out of your life, when you take a voided check, guys, you take that voided check and you put void. Most of the times you put an X through that check. That check is no longer able to be used. So what do you do? You're going to either use it and put it, I mean, excuse me, take it and put it inside your checkbook or put it somewhere in an envelope that you keep your access uh, voided checks for records, or you're going to rip the check up and throw it in the trash in a safe place where no one can get to it so they can put it back together to retrieve your bank account. But you've exited it out. When you arrive near a train track and that bar comes down, there should be X's on that bar that lets you know you can no longer go any further. So they're letting you know that the X is danger. We have to become stronger. And if you're not strong enough to completely let someone out of your life due to detachment issues, you may want to seek counseling as well. Guys, we have to take the proper steps to make sure that there are no more Anitra guns. May she rest in peace. We have to tell the DeMarcus Littles, you have to be strong enough to take projection you have to be strong enough to move forward with your life, regardless of what you were just told in this semi quasi, I'm going to use that word again, relationship that you guys had. I know it's easy for me to say, move on when your feelings are so immense. I know it's easy for me to say, let it go. And if you can't let it go, please seek counseling. Talk to someone you trust. Do not, do not 
put yourself in a place where you know you would lose it and snap and harm someone because they have not reciprocated the love that you have given them. Reach out to the National Abuse Hotline if someone has taken things a little bit too far. Bust out your windows and slash your tires, ladies. File a report. Get a restraining order. That way, if something ever happens to you, hopefully it does not. There's records that prove the person who did this is automatically arrested and taken to jail behind causing harm to you. But I'm hoping that these videos and these podcasts, that's why I want you guys to share these videos, share this podcast. You need to reach, we need to reach the next Anitra Dunn today before something happens. We need to talk to the next DeMarcus Little today. This is my third episode of Lust, Lies, and Murder. I got seven more to go. And I'm sure there's hundreds of stories like this. So I'm hoping that these podcasts, excuse me, wakes, wakes someone up, causes someone to reach out to these numbers that I got posted here, causes someone to speak with someone they trust, someone that they can provide their feelings to, and that person will take on their feelings and not laugh at them and make them feel as though they mean they don't their feelings don't mean anything. That's no pun intended, guys. No pun intended. So what do you do moving forward? Break up in a safe place. Break up around a police precinct. You guys are going to hear me say this every, every episode. Unfortunately, I have spoken with an officer and you cannot go inside the police precinct and break up with someone. You can break up with them outside and what they'll do is they'll have an officer come outside and observe you guys while you break up with this individual. I really, really, truly believe breaking up at a police precinct is the best way to go in violent situations as these. And one of the stories I mentioned, a cop was the person that was breaking up, broken up with. DeMarcus Little was an army sergeant. So when you're dealing with these type of gentlemen, you want to be around law enforcement and very close to law enforcement. That way, if these guys do have a weapon on them and they try to go for the weapon, that the officers around can disarm them before any harm is caused to you. I hope this makes sense, guys. Thank you for checking out the podcast. With my understanding, compared with your understanding, we could create a greater understanding. It's April 20th, April 2nd, excuse me, 2022. I've been your host, Shahir Henderson, and I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Rest in peace to Amitra Gunn. Peace out.